Dear Nintendo, I've been a massive fan of Nintendo since I was a child. My friends would often have me over to play games like Gauntlet on the NES or Jurassic Park on the Super NES. And back then, we'd marvel at the impressive graphics or we'd chatter about the expectations for whatever they were developing next. I vividly remember my dad bringing home a Game Boy and a Tetris cartridge, which actually gave me a genuine interest in puzzle games. As a collector, I've gotten my hands on such items as old promotional VHS tapes, an absurd amount of Nintendo Power magazines, a clinically unhealthy overabundance of amiibos, and of course, a huge collection of games from every major Nintendo console, most notably about half of the games released for the Nintendo 64, complete with box, game, and manual. There's a major difference between being a fan of something and being a blind fan. You're not gonna see me screaming in the comment sections declaring that the Wii U is the best system ever made, or that the Virtual Boy was the most misunderstood product known to man. That thing was shit. Complete, utter shit. I'm the kind of fan that gets ecstatic when something I love is done right and done with care, but I'm not blind to the problems. With the looming release of the Switch, I wanted to make this video as an open letter of sorts to Nintendo. Or an open video. I don't know what to say, it's 2017. What's going on? I've heard many of the things I'm about to discuss echoed by close personal friends, and I hope that if Nintendo is watching, they take this to heart. Let's talk a little about Nintendo's history, starting with their first major success. The NES was a groundbreaking machine. After the great video game crash of 1983, the NES successfully changed the business and made home gaming a staple of the future. This whopping behemoth sold over 61 million units worldwide, and with classics like Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Castlevania, and Mega Man 2 under its belt, it's easy to see why. No one in the industry saw this thing coming. The innovations made by this console are still being felt today. With the follow-up, the Super NES, Nintendo continued to dominate the video game scene, despite competition from the Sega Genesis. The Super Nintendo sold over 49 million units, while the Genesis moved about 30 million. The Super Nintendo built upon what the original Nintendo started providing a mostly similar game experience while enhancing the graphics and sound, and adding a few new buttons to the controller. To this day, the SNES controller is considered by many to be one of the most revolutionary ever created. Its design is still being imitated. It wasn't until the Nintendo 64 that the company really felt the heat from a competitor. The Sony PlayStation sold an astounding 102 million units, while the 64 settled for just over 32 million. Sony used disc media, which offered considerably more space, and Nintendo stuck with cartridges, stating that this limited load time. Despite how revolutionary the N64 really was in hindsight, this loss seemed to confuse Nintendo for some time. Their follow-up, the GameCube, might just be the only time in history that Nintendo has attempted to go with the flow, so to speak, creating a device similar in ability and performance as the PS2 and Xbox. Then it seems the company became obsessed with discovering the next big thing. The DS was a huge success for them, selling a whopping 154 million units, so it's no real surprise. Ever since then, their innovations with the Wii motion controls and the Wii U Touch gamepad have placed a focus more on the consoles themselves than the games. While the NES, SNES, and N64 are all revolutionary systems that changed the industry, what do we remember the most about them? Was it the first time you used the controller? I'm betting your best memory with those systems involve the games! When I think of the Super Nintendo, I think of Donkey Kong Country, the amazing soundtrack and the fun challenges. When I think of the NES, I think of the first time I flew in Super Mario Bros. 3. When I think of the N64, I remember late night Goldeneye parties that lasted until 5am and running around Hyrule in the Ocarina of Time. Even into the GameCube era, underrated titles like Eternal Darkness or Beyond Good and Evil stand out. 
absolute classics like Metroid Prime or Rogue Leader were some of the best games I'd ever played. Anyone who loves being creative should always focus on being innovative. I'm certainly not suggesting that Nintendo just become a conveyor belt, churning out games that the masses want, forgetting about being revolutionary. What I'd love to see, however, is for Nintendo to take that vision that they've so wonderfully incorporated into their hardware, the consoles, and apply it to their games instead. The console itself is always important, of course, but at the end of the day, it's the games that sell the console. For instance, despite being intensely loyal to Nintendo in the 90s, I bought a PlayStation for one specific reason. A little game called FUCKING METAL GEAR SOLID! I mean FUCK! The Wii U had so many great ideas, and a few amazing titles like Bayonetta 2, Pikmin 3, and of course Super Smash Bros. But even for that game, the majority still prefer to play it with the GameCube controller. And Nintendo obviously knows that since they offered the GameCube adapter as an option. What does that tell you, Nintendo? When you focus on the industry as a whole, video game development has blown away all expectations I ever had as a kid. Graphics, sound design, and the overall presentation of modern games was like a distant dream in the 80s and 90s. It's unbelievable what games can do today. This is one of the reasons, though, why it's so difficult to truly impress anymore. This is also another reason Nintendo has focused so much on making innovations with its hardware instead. If you can't wow them with the graphics, you might as well blow their socks off with something like motion controls, right? Uh, oh yeah, no. <laughs> In regards to graphics though, the graphical jump from Super Nintendo to Nintendo 64 is still the most impactful I've ever seen. Going from Super Mario World, which in its own right is a fantastic game, to seeing Mario's face bounce onto screen in glorious 3D was jaw-dropping. But today, after genius games like The Last of Us, graphics are expected to be incredible now, so Nintendo can no longer rely on that to impress us. Ever since their decision to limit the Wii to standard definition, they've essentially given up on wowing us visually and focused more on being innovative. But is Nintendo's past really as perfect as my hazy 90s goggles think? It's always difficult to separate yourself from nostalgia when looking into the past, especially with something like Nintendo. Obviously, when I look back, I attribute fond memories of playing those games with friends and I get warm, fuzzy feelings about that. But truthfully, Nintendo's failings have always been clear to me, even when I've been one of their biggest supporters. For example, the Wii was financially successful, yes, but it catered to children far too much alienating Nintendo's lifelong fans by releasing a slew of gimmicky party games and baby games. The 64 Double D? Eh. Uh, you said Double D. Uh, yeah, <coughs> Double D, <coughs> yeah. This was an add-on to the N64 to introduce disc-based media, which ended up only being available in Japan, never seeing the light of day anywhere else. Nintendo filing copyright strikes against many YouTubers who were operating well within their rights is just fucking wrong. And of course, already mentioned, the Virtual Boy was the biggest fucking disaster ever. There's really no way around that one. And what I view as the worst mistake the company has ever made, not continuing its partnership with Rareware. Rareware is responsible for some of the greatest games ever made, and they all just so happen to be on Nintendo consoles. Battletoads, Snake Rattle and Roll, the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy, Killer Instinct, Blast Core, GoldenEye 64, Diddy Kong Racing, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Jet Force Gemini, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Star Fox Adventures. They're widely considered one of the best video game developers of the 90s, and many of their titles, specifically GoldenEye, completely changed the industry forever. One could even argue that its unofficial successor, Perfect Dark, 
was even better. But for whoever the fuck knows why, Nintendo decided not to continue working with Rareware after Star Fox Adventures and Microsoft acquired the company. Since then, Rare has done, well, let's just say it hasn't been the same. Leaving Rare behind was the worst decision Nintendo has ever made. And since then, their focus has gone from crafting incredible games to creating the next big thing. So with all this in mind, what do I want to see out of the upcoming Switch console? GAMES! Take the innovation that you're so known for, Nintendo, and apply it to your games. Make games your fans want. A new Metroid Prime that isn't this. Find ways to make it easier for third-party developers to create games for your system so that they feel comfortable working with you. The Wii U was so vastly different from the PS4 and Xbox One that to create a game for the U meant changing so much of the original code. It's good to be different, but not to be so different that you completely alienate everyone from working with you. Focus on incredible niche titles. Think about it, games like Earthbound, The Secret of Mana, or even the Harvest Moon series have been immensely popular in small circles for ages. The Wii U completely abandoned Natsume's fun farming simulator and a lackluster mobile game was released instead. There are so many underrated titles you could incorporate into your library with a definite focus on creating incredible games. And with Nintendo's vast array of famous characters at its disposal, the opportunities are endless. I've already pre-ordered my Switch, and it's my genuine hope that this console can do what Nintendo seems to have forgotten about since the GameCube ended its run. Remember the fans. The ones who've been there since the beginning. The ones who still read old Nintendo Power magazines. The ones who still host retro game nights with their friends. The ones who remember the glory days. With love, Chris Stuckman. P.S. Thank you very much for watching. You guys are the best. If you like this, you can click right here and get Stuckmanized.